Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to a channel that provides discussions of the latest findings, developments, and perspectives in psychedelic science in a way that's accessible but not superficial at the same time. I'm the host, my name is Minesh. I'm a neuroscience PhD student with ongoing research related to psychedelics among other things. So in my last video, I dove deep into what psychedelic ego death or ego dissolution might be in terms of the latest scientific and philosophical perspectives. So in this video, I'm going to build on that and dive deep into the latest neuroscience findings, which give us insight into how ego dissolution might work in the brain. If you haven't seen my video on what exactly ego dissolution is, I highly recommend checking that video out before this one. But just to summarize what I discussed in there, I made the argument that psychedelic ego dissolution can be understood as a dissolution of two primary aspects of our sense of self. The first is our minimal or embodied sense of self, which corresponds to our sense of having a first person perspective on the world that's rooted in this body. And then the second aspect of our sense of self is our narrative or autobiographical sense of self. So this is our self that's rooted in our memories and it's kind of our conceptually constructed identity or story or narrative of who we are. And so we can understand ego dissolution as dissolving these two aspects of ourself. I'm going to be using that phenomenological framework to interpret or understand the recent neuroscience findings. And before I dive into the specific findings, I just want to say a word about the default mode network. So the media has really latched on to the default mode network as this story of how psychedelics work. And this was also popularized by Michael Pollan in his book, How to Change Your Mind, where he really advanced his view of how our ego is associated with our default mode network. And therefore disintegrating our default mode network leads to a disintegration of our ego. But the truth is, it's really not that simple. So this idea that the default mode network is related to ego dissolution is based on the findings in a 2012 study, which looked at how psilocybin, the active compound in magic mushrooms, works in the brain using fMRI brain imaging. And so this study found that the default mode network became deactivated in the psychedelic state and also became less connected within itself. But the thing is, in this study, there was no explicit quantitative relationship between reduction in default mode network activity or connectivity and ego dissolution. Basically, what gave rise to this idea is the fact that psilocybin seems to reduce activity in default mode network. We kind of know based on past research that default mode network is involved in self-related processes in our brain. And therefore, if it becomes deactivated, that means we are losing our sense of self. And this is called reverse inference in the field of neuroimaging. It is not a valid way to infer things and is very unreliable. Moreover, later findings with LST and also now in DMT are not finding clear-cut relationships between default mode network disintegration and ego dissolution. It's really, again, much more complicated and nuanced than that. And there are a number of other regions and networks outside the default mode network that seem to be related to ego dissolution. And so this is a really important thing to take into account. And I'm definitely going to be doing a future video where I expose some more myths around the default mode network. All right, so now that's out of the way, let's talk about what the findings actually say. And so for the rest of this video, first I'm going to dive into some of the main findings with psilocybin and then some of the findings with LSD. And again, I'm going to be using this framework of the minimal slash embodied sense of self versus narrative autobiographical self as a way to interpret these findings. So let's start with psilocybin. So first, studies have found a correlation between ego dissolution and a reduced diversity of connections of the parahippocampus. So what does that mean? So the parahippocampus is a region that's strongly connected to our hippocampus, where our hippocampus is a region that's very strongly associated with memory. And so what the parahippocampus does is it actually mediates the hippocampus's connections with the rest of the brain. And so any memory information that's in the hippocampus usually will have to go through the parahippocampus to get to the rest of the cortex and influence the rest of the brain's activity. And so for there to be reduced diversity, it just means that the hippocampus is now sharing its information with less of the brain. And something that this might correspond to, and of course this is speculative, is a reduction in our narrative sense of self. So again, the sense of self is rooted in our memories and our past experiences. And so if there's reduced ability for the hippocampus to share its memory information with the rest of the brain, maybe we have less access to this information and are less likely to incorporate it within our sense of self. And two, a more recent study found that there were reduced glutamate levels in the hippocampus and this correlated with ego dissolution. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain 
which just means it's a brain chemical that increases brain activity. And so this study found reductions in this in the hippocampus. And so again, this can correspond to a disruption of memory related processes in the brain. And three, studies have also found that ego dissolution is correlated with the disintegration of the salience network. So how can we understand the salience network? Well, a core brain region that's a part of this network is the insula. And the insula is this kind of integrator brain region, which integrates our bodily feelings and sensations with our cortex. So basically, it enables these body sensations to be available for our appraisal and our awareness, and also allows us to use them in making judgments and taking our actions. And so for this network, which relies heavily on the insula to become disintegrated, means perhaps there's a disruption in our usual integration of bodily signals, which can potentially lead to a reduced sense of awareness of our body or a reduced sense of visibility, which likely relates to our sense of embodied or minimal sense of self. And next, let's look at LSD. First, studies have found a correlation between ego dissolution and reduced connectivity between the parahippocampus and what's called the retral spinal cortex. So again, the parahippocampus is what allows the hippocampus to send its memory outputs to the rest of the brain. And this area called the retral spinal cortex is actually a part of the default mode network and is right next to our so-called posterior cingulate cortex, which is often discussed in the context of psychedelics. And basically what this finding suggests is that the hippocampus is becoming more disconnected from the rest of the default mode network. So again, this corresponds to perhaps a reduced ability to access our memories of our past experiences, which again may correspond to a reduction in our sense of narrative or autobiographical self. And two, another study has found that the extent to which two particular brain regions become more connected to the rest of the brain also correlates with ego dissolution. And these two regions are the temporal parietal junction and the insula. So the insula we've already talked about, it's kind of this integrator of bodily signals with higher order cognition and relates to our sense of awareness of our body and our ability to use bodily signals to motivate our decision making. And the temporal parietal junction is actually a pretty interesting area as well. Similar to the insula, it's also involved in integrating sensory signals. In particular, you could say it integrates visual information with our somatic or bodily sensation information. And it's involved in giving us a sense of our location in space and our sense of coherent bodily representation. What's interesting about this region is that studies have stimulated it and kind of disrupted activity there and have induced out-of-body experiences. So essentially, our sense of being in this body, in this place in space, can be said to at least in part be related to the ability for this region, the temporal parietal junction, to be integrating our visual inputs with our somatic bodily inputs. And so as I mentioned, the temporal parietal junction and insula are becoming more interconnected with the rest of the brain, and this correlates with ego dissolution and the LSD state. And this goes correspond to now all of a sudden, your brain is incorporating all sorts of various other inputs into your sense of bodily identity identity instead of what it usually does. And this may lead to a sense of blurred bodily boundaries and feelings of physically merging with our environment. And again, this relates to our embodied or minimal sense of self. Okay, so those are our main findings. There's really not that much research being done owing to the infancy of psychedelic neuroscience. And, but you can see very generally this differentiation between aspects of brain activity which, which might relate to our memory-based sense of self, our narrative self, and also our bodily sense of self, our minimal embodied sense of self. And you may also be wondering why LSD and psilocybin are not the same in terms of the correlations with ego dissolution. And this can be due to a whole variety of factors. First of all, the sample sizes are pretty small in these studies. It's about 15 for LSD and 15 for psilocybin. And we know from the behavioral sciences and neuroscience research that you want like minimally at least 30 to 50 people or more to have reliable correlations. So you know, it's very hard to collect data with psychedelics. So at the end of the day, these early preliminary studies should be taken with a grain of salt. There is motivation to study these things in a larger sample once there's more government funding available and once regulations are eased a little bit. And there may also just be differences in how LSD and psilocybin elicit ego dissolution. We know that LSD has a bit more of a messy pharmacology and hits more receptors with high affinity than psilocybin does. And so this can relate to maybe a number of different distinct changes in brain activity. But really, again, we need to collect a lot more data and do these with many more subjects to be able to draw any solid and reliable conclusions. So with that, that's all that I wanted to say. I hope this was informative and gave you a sense of how these very complex subjective experiences that 
we refer to as ego dissolution might map onto distinct sets of brain processes. And I hope you also saw how the brain processes which have been found to date kind of make sense. They allow us to make reasonable interpretations about what might be going on. But again, all this stuff is very preliminary and the future will tell how much they hold up. And so please leave a comment below on what you thought about this video and if you have any other questions and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll see you soon.